In a world where everyone's talking about their freedoms, only Jesus Christ can truly set you free. On today's show, you're going to see multiple people who experience the freedom that comes with Christ. I'm Raya Berryhill, and this is Mission Messiah. <laughs> first and um, I'd been fasting for a week I wanted kind of to get close to God and on my daughter's birthday the enemy had attacked me really really strong to the point of almost leaving the mission and I've been here seven months um, and that's just how powerful the enemy can be if you don't lean on God so um, the next week I still here obviously the next week um, that Monday was it Monday what day did you guys leave Wednesday Okay, so it would have been Thursday. Um, some ladies came in and they were our first customers after we had just cleansed the store and all around and the pawn shop, all this. No, it right? cleansing. Tell people what um, A spiritual cleansing. What we did was we dedicated our home, our business, the people that come in the store and the people that work here, we dedicated it to God and we cleansed it out and from the enemy to not be able to come in. in. Right over it. Yes, it will. And we put oil and we did it, even the connected stores, because they're part, they're connected to us. So we just cleansed and prayed over the whole thing, the vehicles, the um, all the merchandise that goes in and out and the people that come in. Our first customers were two ladies. And now, now you better hold on. I got the first part of this story a minute ago and I'm blown away. And this one we said, we got to tell people okay. what God did. So our first customers were two ladies from Nashville. They had never been in here. And the reason why they came is they had known that this was a bar. They're sitting at the park and they heard God say, mark your territory, that they, that anything that the enemy had stole to come back and take it back. And this is right after we had cleansed everything. So they came in and they found out it was a store. So me and I, my sisters. So, but let me ask this. Let's make sure everybody understands. These ladies live in Nashville now, but they had lived here at some time before. No, they they came here for a reason, which I'm going to get to that. Okay. Okay. So they were at the park at this time, though. And um, anyways, so Lena Kay got to tell a little bit about her testimony and what WOW is. And I got to tell my testimony. I told them that I gave them my kids for adoption. It's been four years. My daughter's birthday was May 31st. Um, and I've been struggling with some closure. They started crying. Their sister had given up a son for adoption 33 years ago and she had struggled with bondage and some kind of addiction and on May 31st her son their nephew contact their mother yes and they were here for reunification and they oh. believe yes <laughs> and they believe that God is limitless and my fasting wasn't just for me and my children it was for other people to be able to find their children and so I got to hear that that story and share my testimony and they got to share their testimony and why they were here and that there was a reason why they hadn't left to go back to Nashville because they believed that I needed to hear that, that God is faithful and that God is doing things behind the scenes. And so that's why they're here. And they didn't just prophesy over me, they prophesied over my sister Allison over there and over Lena. And we just got to share what we're doing in the kingdom. And so that was so awesome to be able to hear that and experience that. And we are taking back our territory. Woo! Did you get some of that? Take your territory back. Yes. Amen. Amen. Mm. I didn't just fast for my children. I thought that that's what I was doing, but I was also fasting for kids that are looking for their family. And God is is not limitless, and He's opening doors and showing me right before my eyes that it's bigger than me. 
and he wants to do more with me in my testimony to help others. And you know, while we're there, I have, I have a, a cousin that was born within about two weeks of me that his mother, my aunt, gave up for adoption. And he found her, um, he found her about 10 years ago. So he was about 55 years old and he found her. I believe there's many That's more stories. Dog. Yes. I'm Erger, Jamie Berry here. But I tell you what, when I when I saw you speaking yesterday afternoon, I found the department you were in, and uh, and it was powerful. And so, can you kind of tell me a little bit? I mean, you, you shared beautifully yesterday uh, how the Lord spared you. Oh my word! Well, I should have been aborted, at least according to the world. Someone like me, right. with a story like mine, I should have. Uh, been thrown away basically because of circumstances that were out of my control. My birth mom experienced the, the horror and the violence of rape, yet she chose to be stronger than her circumstances, yes. giving me the incredible gift of life, uh, giving God. me the gift of adoption. Um, I was loved in a small little family of 15. I have six brothers, <laughs> six sisters. You just love it? Small 15? <laughs> yeah. Small. Uh, grew up in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, but I was loved like crazy by two parents who didn't set out on any kind of mission. They just yeah. knew that they wanted to adopt those that the world said would be unwanted. Yes. In fact, my mom was temporarily placed in a children's home for one year. Really? When she was five years old. Your mom was? My mom was. Wow. So she was placed in a children's Ooh, home I got for chills. one year. Uh, she had an alcoholic father and her parents were separating. And that's where her heart for adoption began at the age of five. Wow. She made a promise to God that she would wow. be a mom to those who don't have one. And so she followed through. Yeah. Um, so our family of 15 is just the result of two parents who knew that they were called by God to love those of the world and said, you know, Unwanted. They, they have no purpose, they're unplanned, they're going to be unloved. And they, they just shredded that whole lie. Shredded. The myth of the unwanted child. I, I was loving yeah. crazy. I, yeah. I mean, this is the result, the Radiance yeah. Foundation. What we do Amen. is the result of two parents loving uh, me, loving my nine other siblings who were adopted. Right. Um, our family has carried on this legacy of adoption. So a number of my siblings are also now So they had parents. five natural They had three ten. homemade. Three homemade. Oh, three homemade. Okay, okay. yeah. I like that. And then ten adopted. Yeah. And so now there are, let's see, uh, three of us are adoptive parents. And some of my nieces and nephews are also now adoptive parents. Okay. And it's just legacy of love that's been carried on. So I'm passionate about creatively illuminating yeah. that every human life is purpose. Absolutely. Well, you know, one of the things that I loved yesterday in that picture was the ethnicity. I mean, you know, we, we cross some lines in that family, don't we? Uh, well, we should. And, uh, <laughs> I, the problem is that there are lines. There shouldn't be lines in the first place. Yeah, exactly. But exactly. Growing up in the family that I did, I mean, I Native American, Vietnamese, black, white, I'm mixed. Um, a number of my siblings are mixed. But that's just God. Jesus God didn't is, talk about that, did he? No, I mean, in fact, X, didn't he say X we 17. were one? Yes, X yeah, 17, right we're there. We're one. one There's neither bond or slave. Right here. Jew or Greek. Amen. Right there. there you go. We <laughs> are one. One I love it. Race. We're created one. By God. He created Amen. Made in his image. Because he is the most insanely creative uh, yes. force out there. But he didn't create color, for instance, for us to separate ourselves. No. no he no. created it for us to. Uh, Interest and enjoy and love. No. And I love all these. Guys. And we're all people of color, by the way. I hate that whole phrase, people yeah. of color, because, I mean, because it What's seems that? to indicate that only certain people are people of color. <laughs> I mean, I think we all have a color. We all. Yeah. I mean, unless, unless you're translucent. Yeah. I, I don't think so. Not yet, yeah. But I love growing up in this family that we're, you know, we came from all kinds of different backgrounds, but we still were one. We were still one family, and we weren't um, bonded together by culture, bonded together by ethnicity. We were bonded together by love. My hey, parents I mean, love. Did you hear that? This family of 15 was bonded together by love. 
Love never fails, it does never it, brother? Fails. And we all know that God is love. My parents love Jesus. They love Jesus. And that the natural outflow of loving Jesus is loving people. Yes. And they loved us intensely and unleashed purpose. I'm walking down a hall with many doors. Life has many doors. We have to make a choice. Jesus said, choose the way that is straight and narrow that leads unto everlasting life. Choose Jesus. Amen. Well, and I love that. I, I love when you did that on the screen of, of everything that, that, you know, their love manifested in one. Yes. One of the 13. Yes. Right? Yes. Incredible. I mean, I mean, if you could somehow capture all that's been unleashed in all my siblings, yes. um, it's really amazing. I mean, love transforms all things. I, I'm so grateful for my birth mom for making that, that singular decision. Uh, now, happily married. My wife is actually the executive director of our organization. Is she really? Foundation. And yet raising four kids. We have four kids, two of whom are also adopted. Are they really? And um, four who are homeschooled. Okay. And that's always a beautiful challenge. Yeah. We, we, we have six. They were all homeschooled. Okay. Oh, yeah. And, and you survived, so that's we good. We got Absolutely. I got something to look forward to. Yeah. But it's amazing because we get to pour ourselves, our faith, our love of Jesus, our our worldview into our kids. Yes. Instead of other people Feeding. dumping, Fe dumping. Their, their Thank you. and their ideological refuse into their minds. Yeah. And I exactly. love that they're growing up understanding why my wife and I are passionate about illuminating God-given purpose in every human life. Well, and that's that's one thing, you know. Right here, I love this, <laughs> that, that the world needs to know, Brent, and that is truth ain't hate, but let love illuminate, amen? But that's the thing the world needs to understand right now, truth isn't hate. Yeah. People don't understand that, they, and too many Christians confuse capitulation for compassion. Exactly. And that's the upsetting thing because people are too afraid to engage in these conversations and I'm being loving because I'm just accepting you, I'm just, but see, the difference is love lifts people out of their circumstances. Yes. Tolerance pretends oh, that they are leaves no them in circumstances. It. Leaves them in it. Right. And isn't that and what the enemy of our soul desires? To separate, isolate, and bury yes. under the rubbish. All, all the, and one of our foundational verses, one of the, the motivational verses for us is out of 1 Corinthians 13, 6. It says, love does not delight in evil, but it rejoices in the truth. Amen. And, and we, we have a society now, even with Christians who don't even acknowledge oh, no. No. that there's sin, that there is evil. There yeah. is. Yeah. And because no, there's not us. many pulpits calling them to repentance. No, exactly. We need, we need more of a call to repentance so that individuals may find this abundant life yes. that Christ afforded us. Right. Abundant. And abundant. not just surviving. Yeah. But you thriving. live the abundant life, right. don't you, brother? I do. And I think my parents, they, they, they put into me just this love of God, this love of just a love for others. Uh, a love of servant leadership. I, my dad modeled that right. in our family business. Uh, I can't even can't even tell you how much they poured into me. Now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. There were times I decided I was gonna take my own little detour. Oh yeah, which you know yeah. ended up a mess. So for a number of years I, I tried that, but um, yeah. it's amazing because what they poured into me and, and any Christian parent it does not return void. Amen. And just like a number of my other siblings, we we came back. Yes. to that yes. right place. Train up a child in the are. way he should go. Yes. And um, I temporarily departed, but I did not permanently depart. Yes. And, Amen. Uh, and I thank God for that. I thank God that he is faithful. He's faithful. And so just our work through the Radiance Foundation is kind of, well, it's our act of worship. It's Amen. giving back to God all the talents and abilities that he's given my wife Amen. and I. And I'm assuming that a lot of this is your work. Design. I, this. I, I design. I'm a creative professional. Worked in the ad agency world for years. Okay. And well, it's. I, I read several. Design. Well, and I, I read these, and I love every single one of them. Yeah. So I, let me ask this real quick because we want to put your website up on here, but I heard you expressing a desire to multiply yourself. Yes. So how would we say that? You know, there's others of you out there that that hear this man's heart and may have experienced some of these things. You know, I had a, this was a blessing, about two Christmases ago, we were having Christmas over at the over at the mission, over at our main campus, and there was a knock at the door, and I opened the door, and there was a girl there that I thought, I think I know this girl. And she said, Mr. Berryhill, she said, I'm so-and-so, I was so-and-so's daughter, and I was here as a little girl. 
and I just want to thank you. Wow. You know? And that's what we're talking about. So if there are those of you that are out there that, that have had this kind of experience and you have been loved, would you contact our brother here? He may have a speaking opportunity for you. Amen? To go tell the world what who God is and how much he loves. How much he loves and how much he transforms. I mean, I, I am a the tangible example Absolutely. of God enabling triumph to rise from tragedy. Amen. And he, he specializes in that. He specializes <laughs> in it. So I'm locking shields with this brother. Come Amen. On. That's good stuff, Ryan. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, welcome to Life's Answers. Rinda and I are over in Denver, Colorado at the Western Conservative Summit. And let me tell you, there's probably not a better place for this answer to have come in. But I want to just read it. Well, in fact, you want to read it, baby? Yeah. This is Victor from New Mexico, and he says, I've been watching your show, and I thought Jesus was a personal thing and something you weren't supposed to talk about in public. Good question. Good question. Do you want to, want to take it? You want me to start? Go. You know, Victor, uh, the Word of God says that everything we do, we are to do as unto the Lord. You know, a picture paints a thousand words, and people so often are more apt to listen to what they see than what they hear. So I really believe with all of my heart that one of the shortfalls, failings, in Christendom at large in the Western society is to put Christ in a box, not take him to work, not take him into the politics, not take him into the classroom. And I believe today that we are soundly suffering from that very thing. In fact, I'm gonna be honest, we listened to the Media Research Center's report last night. And if Christians do not wake up to this, we've got more problems than we have today. And this is what he said. And they track all media around the world. He said there was an incredible uptick even two months ago on intensity to persecute Christians. If there was ever an hour that we better speak boldly for our king, this is the hour in which we live. Okay, so Rinda, based on what I've just said, based on Victor's question, what is it that you have gained from the speakers here at the summit to this question? I'm inspired. You're inspired? Yeah, I'm inspired by seeing so many different people from so many different walks of life taking a stand for their faith. Not just the Jack Phillipses, um, not just politicians, but people in the workplace, uh, people in ministry, it's crazy but people in ministry having to step up. These are, there are huge victories taking place right now. And I've said it before, I believe Donald Trump issued in a new place of boldness for the populace. I believe this victory with Jack Phillips with the Supreme Court and the 7-2 vote is a great victory. But let me tell you, we cannot rest on those laurels. Those are doors of opportunity. We, we need to all be inspired. And unctioning for each and every one of us to be inspired and carry our faith into every place that we go. Amen. Amen? Amen. Let's go get them, Victor. Lock and feel. wondering why we're here blindfolded. <laughs> it's because I made a comment to Tammy and it's, um, I don't want to say set her off, but... <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> but something like that. Okay. You see, my brother had our DNA run and it turns out, and I was telling Tammy this in an innocent way, it turns out that I have a Neanderthal gene, just one you can see it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that is below the belt. 
I have a Neanderthal gene that allows me to smell flower scents stronger than anything else, which is why I can never have flower candles. And I told her that, and she said, I'm calling your bluff. Your bluff on this. So here we are, Blinds Man's, blinds man's Bluff. Blinds Man's Bluff. And, and we've asked Lena Kay to bring us four candles. And we're going to try to guess. And we're going to see who's... Whose sniffer is better? And so, here's the deal. We have a bet. Okay. You ready? It's lunch. I <laughs> know. Okay. It's a, are you close, Lena? I'm close. Who's close? I am. Brent's close. <laughs> Just to be close to you. <laughs> we are totally blind. <laughs> okay. Hey, is somebody coming with a candle? You can't even talk with a blindfold on, Tammy. I know. It's weird. Okay, candle? Candle? Who's coming with a candle? I'm putting my hands out. Are you going, who are you going to Oh, first? just hold right. it under our Ms. nose. Tammy. Hold it under our nose. Okay, Tammy. Yeah, you can't touch it. Then you might Don't say it. a word. Okay, I have my idea. All right. <laughs> That's not a candle. <laughs> That's, okay. That's pledge. <laughs> That's not a pledge. Here, do it again. Ready? I'm under your nose. Okay. Was that it pledge? Is pledge? I know. That's what lemon. I'm saying too. It's, it's a lemon, lemon pledge. What is it? It is. It's lemon verbenion. Uh, hey! hey. <laughs> we okay. So yeah, one high one. Five. Wow! High five! High, high five. five! There we go. Okay. High five. Verbena. Le lemon verbena. Lemon verbena. Verbena. Yes, okay. Verbena. Same as pledge. Yeah. <laughs> See now, I could, I could, I could smell the verbena. I could smell the flower. Oh, listen to her. She could smell the verbena. <laughs> <laughs> I can okay. smell the flower. I have that Neanderthal gene. I know. You tell me all the time, right? Okay. okay. Wait a minute. Okay. I okay. smell sweat. Oh. Oh, easy. Oh, sorry. Come back. I don't get that one. Okay. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> I want to know if it's good. Okay. Are you huffing it or are you smelling <laughs> it? <laughs> I'm going to try Okay, one, one more. One more. <laughs> okay, Miss Tammy first. Are you here? I'm here, Miss Tammy. Are you smelling it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, smell, smell, okay. smell, smell. <laughs> I can't make that make sense. Can you? Yeah. Set, uh, what do you think? <laughs> we probably should have written these down so we didn't change. Mm. Can, can you say it in the Neanderthal? That's a that, that's, hey, 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 that's a lime. I don't I don't speak Neanderthal. <laughs> I'm not a man. <laughs> She's got the Viking gene too, though. How do you have the Viking gene? <laughs> that's got a lime in it. Uh, it it's got. There's a lime. Sandalwood. It's got oh, there's amber, a sandalwood. It's sandalwood. Got, uh, <laughs> what is it? Thai. Thai. Thai lemongrass. Thai. See, lemon, lime, it's the same thing. <laughs> Your olfactory nerves are closest to the brain. And Good that's point. why it evokes memory. If you want to attract a man, apparently you just have to dab vanilla behind your ears. Vanilla. Vanilla? Yeah. Brent, you like vanilla? I was thinking steak sauce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, spoken like a true Neanderthal. <laughs> you know, though, in all seriousness, I love though as we as we lifted those beautiful scents to our nose. We, you know, everything directs me back because God did that. God made that. That's a specific creative scent. How amazing! We are fearfully and wonderfully made, and our prayers are like a sweet aroma that is lifted unto the nostrils of God himself. They're filtered through the fingers of Jesus, but we become that sweet fragrance to the Lord. Business Services is your source for color printing, signage, graphic art design, wide format printing, and custom embroidery. Zip Business Services is an authorized FedEx shipping location located at 943 North Grandview in Odessa. Zip on over. Zip, 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 zip.
Father, we thank you that there is no fear in love, that perfect love casts out fear. And so, Father, we thank you this morning that, that we're coming to understand who we are in you and who you are in us and, and Father, the, the depth of your love for us. And Father, as we just continue this morning uh, looking at the book of Nehemiah, and Father, we look at the way that you take our lives when they're in utter despair and hopelessness, and Lord, your plan, the, the absolute detail of how, Father God, you will deliver us out of bondage and, Father, build us into who it is that you've created us to be. So, Father, even this morning, I ask for the, for the presence and the power and the anointing of your Holy Spirit, Father God, just come and, and visit us, Lord. I, I pray that, that the things that we look at this morning over the next few minutes, Father, will be indelibly printed upon each heart present, Father God, that, Lord, we'll not only have these truths for ourselves, but, Lord, we'll have them so embedded that, that, Lord, when we see others in that state of hopelessness, that, Lord, we know how to respond. We know how to encourage them and instruct them, Father God, into the light, into your love. So, Lord, would you just do that this morning? Lord, let these, let these truths be, be our tools, Lord Jesus, to do that which you have called each one of us to do. For, Father, I declare and I know today that each and every one of these men and women present, Father God, have been handpicked of you, Father God, for a time just such as this. So, Father... Let us not waste it. Let us not be frivolous. Let us not believe or take the bait of the enemy, Father God, which would, which would dispel this truth in any way whatsoever. Lord, we thank you. Father, I thank you for each one of these precious souls of yours, Father God. These children, Father, for truly we are the child of God. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.